cleared out your desk. Three virals and a paper. On the radar until October, November or something. So you and really initially they said, can you have it done for next year? And it was like, uh, that's like six weeks mm. away. No. So then I foolishly said, maybe by the end of January. Mm. And then I thought, right. so then I get back to him and say, yeah, yeah. February. Yeah. And then it ended up being where we are now, so a week into February yeah. to March. Yeah. Pretty good. That's very good. Time. From October to that. Yeah. It's a big scale. I know, that's right. Because you've got to have the history as well. well more for me, yeah. because, you know, I've had to pay more people to work on it. Yeah. And the budget. You know, and initially it was half the size too. Because it is huge. I, I ended up looking at it thinking, should do the whole thing. But even from uh, watching on the Instagram, seeing how you developed, I didn't yeah. think it was going to be this excellent. No, I know. Like, and it's one thing when, you, when you're when you looking at it on a computer, yeah, you, you look at it like that, yeah. and then you zoom out. But when you begin to lay the boards out and yeah. see, oh my God, and you've got them stacked under the corner of the studio, and you've got two weeks, and you're thinking, hang on, it's taking us two days to do four panels, and we've got... So there was a bit of sweating. And then the funny thing was that there was a bit of jiggling around dates, and at a crucial moment there was a miscommunication. I thought I was starting on Monday, in fact I was starting on Sunday, so we lost a crucial day, and suddenly I and I had a cold sweat, and it was like, oh, the nights, anyway, well, I, I it's think all right. It I think it's that the only thing we see today is the sunshine for us to do it. That's right. That is absolutely sure. In the early morning, <laughs> Alistair has an array of public art in Cricklewood already. Mm -hmm. The uh, striking red Cricklewood sign in the station garden, <laughs> Daisy the colourful cow, and the wonderful sheep on Cricklewood yeah. Green. Mm -hmm. Now, this project goes back to May last year when one of our team members, Ben, read about the Passenger Benefit Fund. In July, GTR Govia did a consultation where passengers and groups could submit projects and ideas to, be, to improve the station. In September, we heard that our bids had been successful, as had the Cricklewood Town team. So it's been months since then of due diligence and meetings until we got to today, when we're delivering the first project through the Passenger Benefit Fund. I'd like to say, Fantastic. I'd like to say a massive thank you to Alistair. Oh, thank you, Alistair. This is quite stunning. Thank you. And um, now I'd just like to yeah. Hello, thank you all for coming on a fairly miserable morning. <laughs> Much appreciated. This project was, is not a solo work in any way. There have been several other artists involved with making it. Particularly, I'd like to thank Barbara Bayer, who's here. Big hand for Barbara. And my wife, Deborah, who's hiding around the corner. <laughs> mastered the colour scheme and has been mixing colours by hand and has been very long suffering. I'd like to thank Mick, Mickey Rain and Karen Blue as well and the team from Tate who helped install it and of course GTR who have commissioned it and Marie yes, who is GTR. the best patron <laughs> anybody could ever hope for. Amazing. So brilliant. Uh, it's, it's 24 metres long. Initially, it was going to be about half the length, and I had a mad moment when I thought, no, 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 you've got to do the whole thing. <laughs> In between the First and the Second World War, so Hanley Page was an inventor, uh, an industrialist, and a fairly incredible character who was present at the very beginning of aviation. He was one of the pioneers in this country to take on the ideas that took root around the world at the beginning of the 20th century and uh, went from building planes which literally nobody knew whether they would fly to having great ambitions that nobody else believed could be done which was to build massive planes that could carry tons of payload. That's what these images depict. These are planes which were used particularly in the First World War to bomb but then at the end of the war with the armistice, they were redundant. And it took a leap of imagination that seems obvious to us now that those aeroplanes could carry passengers. So Handley Page established one of the very, very first airlines that carried passengers in converted bombers 
all built by hand from timber and metal in Cricklewood by men and women, some of whom are depicted in the mural, from land that still had cows grazing in the fields. I seem to remember Mary telling us there are some local residents who still remember the early days, telling us that the aeroplanes, when they came into land, would fly low to scare the cows out of the way before they <laughs> came round again to touch down. So that's almost within living memory. We're just falling off the edge of that memory, sadly. Which is why it's so important, I think, to, to have something here to mark it. There's only one road name up here that even mentions Handley. And Handley Page went on to build their cross into the 60s and their claim to fame is way beyond flying people to Paris. This is just a focusing on one particular area of particular interest that is something that grabs the imagination. The imagery is all taken from photographs gleaned from various places, including from local residents' own collections. And uh, there's much more that we can learn from it. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about how you were involved with Handley Page. Um, well, I'm a genuine old Handley Page employee, um, <laughs> but uh, not as old as Handley Page itself. You know, I started an apprenticeship here in 1959, up the, up the road there, um, and served with the company until it went bust in 1970. So I spent a lot of time in Cricklewood over those first five years of my apprenticeship. So I got to know the area a little bit. It's changed a bit now, but yeah, uh, uh, used to get the, the 645 trolley bus from Barnet to be here at eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And, uh, How many people worked at the factory at its peak? Well, it, its peak was um, we're talking about five thousand, but it, was, it diminished wow. over the not not just here, but it had other sites, the Cricklewood, the Radlett site as yeah. well. Um, but I couldn't say exactly how many people yeah, actually worked here. A lot here. of people. Yes, because it was very busy during the wartime years, of course. And, yes. uh, so a lot of other firms involved with the production of the bombers as well. Then. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I used to spend my lunchtime sitting out in the grass at the Vale and uh, thinking this used to be part of the aerodrome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The <laughs> page weren't just building military aircraft, were they? They built no, well, beautiful <laughs> airliners. Yes. <laughs> you mentioned uh, Imperial Airways. Sort of the 1930s was sort of typified by the giant sort of Henry Page HB42 airliner. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Festus yeah. of GTR Gothia, who's yeah. delivering these projects with yeah. the great. Yeah. And yeah. I also forgot to thank Mark, the space manager, for all his support. <laughs> Date pizza leaflet, six quid in cash, a memory stick. They've cleared out your desk. They've cleared out your desk. They blame it on restructuring. Ideas and outsourcing their idea of streamlining. They cleared out your.